Welcome. So here we go. What I want to do is show you how to solve for the zeros of, of this polynomial, or the x-intercepts as we're going to call them. Also to determine the end behavior and the multiplicity. So the first thing let's do, let's get the easiest one out of the way, right? So I want to determine the end behavior. And to determine the end behavior, we need to look at the degree and we need to look at the leading coefficient. So here, the degree, remember, is going to be your largest exponent in your polynomial. So in this case, I have a degree 3. And my leading coefficient is your coefficient of your leading term, which in this case is 1. Then what we're going to do is we're going to apply the leading coefficient test. And the leading coefficient test tells us if we have an odd degree and an even leading coefficient, then our graph is going to fall to the left and rise to the right. So I'm just going to write falls left and rises right. All right? Good. I don't know. Whatever. So here we go. Now the next thing we need to do is determine the zeros. So what I'm going to do is remember the zeros are your x-intercept, where your graph crosses the x-axis. Therefore, we, need, we know that y is equal to 0. Or in this case, since we're talking about a function, f of x, our output, is going to be equal to 0. So we're going to represent 0 in for our f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared minus 25x plus 100. Now, in previous videos, we worked on completing the square. And we've also worked on quadratic formula to help us solve it. We've also talked about um, factoring. Well, those two, the first two are great methods to use when you have it in a quadratic form, because you can complete the square. And also, quadratic formula, you need to make sure you're dealing with a quadratic. We could solve this by graphing, um, but obviously I like to do videos that are in person, so I'm not going to show you the calculator route. The next way we can do this is solve by factoring. Now, we notice this is not a trinomial, so we can't go through normal factoring technique. But there is a factoring technique that we could look at first, is seeing is there anything all of these terms share? And of course, there's not a common term amongst them, so I can't just factor out a term. But there's a next thing I look at is whenever I have four terms and I'm looking into factoring, factor by grouping. Write it down, remember it. Four terms, factor by grouping. So that's what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split up my first two terms and my last two terms. I'm just going to put parentheses around them. Then what I'm going to do when factor by grouping, what you do is you just split, the, you split your polynomial up and you factor each group individually. So I see, what can I factor out of my first two terms? Well, I can factor out an x squared. So I have x squared times x minus 4. Then I look at my second group and I say, what can I factor out of that? And I can factor out a negative 25, and that leaves me with an x minus 4. So what you notice, ladies and gentlemen, is by, by factoring out, what, I've, what I have done is all I've done is just rewritten each one of these as a, when, when they've been factored out. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to take it a step further. Can I factor something? Can I factor out a common term again? And you notice, yes, there's a common term of x minus 4 and x minus 4. So I'm going to factor out the x minus 4. So I say 0 equals x minus 4 times what's left over? x squared minus x25. x squared minus 25. And then there we go. Now I can use the zero product property to solve. So I have x minus 4 equals 0 and x squared minus 25 equals 0 by using the zero product property. Then my zeros are going to be x equals 4. Add 25 to the other side, take the square root, I get plus or minus 5. So x equals plus or minus 5. Now we, what we need to do is determine the multiplicity. Remember, the multiplicity is going to tell us if our graph is going to touch at the 0 or if it's going to cross. And I'll show you how to graph this in a second. So here, my multiplicity, I need to look. What you need to do to determine the multiplicity is you need to go back and look at where it, uh, what your, not a, your degree of your factor. Here, my degree of my factor is 1. So this, actually, all of my zeros have a multiplicity of 1. 
Now, this one gets pretty confusing for students because they see the squared. But remember, it's the, it's the exponent of your factor, not what's inside your factor. It's the exponent of your factor. So therefore, all of my zeros are going to have a multiplicity of 1. Now, if I wanted to graph this real quick, let's just take a look at our end behavior. We said it falls left, rises right, correct? The next thing is we know it crosses at positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 5, and negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we could say it's going to look probably something like that. That's not the prettiest, obviously, graph. But you can kind of see you need to know that it's important that since it has an odd multiplicity, it's going to cross at each one of the zeros that we determine. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's a brief little overview. I hope, uh, hope that helped you out. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks.